Please stand for a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silent reflection for servicemen and women throughout the world and all those who have passed away in our community during the past week. Thank you. <clears throat> Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Here. Mr. Rogan? Here. Mr. Loscombe? Here. Mr. Gone? Here. Mr. McGough? Here. Dispense with the reading of the minutes. Third order. 3A audit status from Robert Rossi and Company received March 20th, 2014. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B Lackawanna County Subdivision and Land Development Evaluation received February 12, 2014. Are there any questions? If not, received and filed. 3C Agenda for the City Planning Commission meeting held March 26th, 2014. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Clerk's notes? Nothing, Mr. McGough. Any council members have announcements? Mr. McGough, I have, I have a few. Okay. Uh, the first is the West Scranton High Park uh, Neighborhood Watch is going to hold an April Fool's Night out on April the 1st with celebrity bartenders to benefit their organization. Uh, it'll be held at Kilcoins in West Scranton. Um, also, in West Scranton, there's a program conducted by Neighborhood Works to offer free home repairs in West Scranton by volunteers. That'll take place in the summer. The um, opportunity for those applications closes on March 31st. Uh, if anyone is interested, they should contact uh, Neighborhood Works. Uh, and the last thing I have is um, I'd like to wish someone happy birthday. I haven't done this before, but I haven't heard of anybody who deserved one like this before. Um, yesterday uh, was Helen Kravitz's 90th birthday. Oh uh, everybody knows Helen. She's been a great asset to, to the city and especially in North Scranton. And I'd just like to wish her a happy birthday. Thank you. Just one announcement. And I'd also like to wish Helen a happy birthday. 90 is uh, certainly a milestone. And anyone involved in government in the city of Scranton knows Helen and, and all the hard work that she does. Um, the announcement is the Dante Club will be reopening on Tuesday, April 1st at 11 a.m. There will be a haddock fish dinner on Friday um, the 4th from 4.30 until the fish is gone. And it's $12 for a dinner. Anyone else? Uh, I do have one. Uh, March, this is a traffic update on Saturday, March 29th. The 600 block of Linden Street between Adams and Jefferson Avenue will be closed to, to vehicular traffic from 4 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, that is for the pouring of concrete in the foundation of the, uh, the building at that corner. So that street, there will be traffic flaggers posted on Jefferson and Adams Avenues and also at Linden Street during this time period. So that's uh, Saturday, March 29th, Linden Street, 600 block of Linden will be closed from 4 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, on tonight's agenda, uh, there again are a number of appointments. We have received letters from and resumes from most of those, all of those in seventh order have been received and I believe there's only one in fifth order that has not and is in the process of being received. Um, 7E on the agenda will be tabled. It is our understanding that 
Um, the person that is involved in that appointment has withdrawn. Uh, we have not yet received formal confirmation of that, so we will be tabling 7E this evening. And the last thing on the agenda in fifth order, um, there is a, an amendment to um, a prior ordinance dealing with secondhand shops, which we all refer to, I guess, as pawn shops. But um, it is an ordinance that was, <coughs> um, I'll say, requested or at least suggested by the Scranton Police Department that would um, allow them a little bit more control and uh, over the, the sale of goods through these secondhand stores. And it would be a, a, a further protection to the, to the general public um, by forcing people who are selling goods or asking people who are selling goods to provide um, photo identification when they went to these, um, these stores. And that is all. Fourth order, citizens participation. Ozzie Quinn. Good evening, Ozzie Quinn, Scranton. Good evening. Uh, last week, Scranton Lackawanna County Taxpayers and Citizens Association held a debate between a uh, representative attorney, Joseph O'Brien, a representative for the Lackawanna County Study Commission, Frank Ruggiero, in regards to the form of government for Lackawanna County, which will be on the primary ballot on May 20th. Uh, we got a lot of good feedback from it. Uh, it's, 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 I think it's good if you uh, Google ECTV, you covered it, and watch the debate, because I think that you'll be learn a little bit more about the two forms of government, how it's looked at at different oppositions, OK? Uh, and on April 15th, we will be having the uh, House of Representative uh, candidates here for District 1, 12, 13, and 14 uh, to discuss the issues uh, for this coming election, okay? Uh, as president of the Hill Neighborhood Association, I told you uh, a week or two ago that we were going along with a socioeconomic study, uh, a sample study in the Hill section. We we're gonna do over 500 houses as a sample, sample study, about 10% of the houses up there, to see what the issues, problems, and needs are. Uh, concurrently, we it's in April, we're going to also do a business retention study. And that study is going to have be, we're going to have a personal interview with each of the uh, proprietors of businesses throughout the Hill section to determine some of the issues that might bo be bothering in, uh, in regards to parking, zoning, job training, or capital to fix up their uh, building or to uh, uh, expand it. Business retention, I think, is a good program, and I think what we're trying to do is to keep these jobs and everything in Scranton so we don't pick up the paper one day and see that somebody left down on some Mulberry Street or something. Uh, uh, also, I just want to mention on that, and this is very important, I think, okay, and we're going to give a handout at this. Uh, the government the United States government contracts out $650 billion a year, okay? That's a lot of money, and we want the businessmen to know this in Scranton, up in the Hill section, not only in the Hill section, but also uh, throughout the city. Uh, you know, they give contracts for every industry imagined. Uh, machine shops, distributors of all sorts, services, landscaping, lawn cutting, snow removal, construction, A&E firms, and suppliers to the construction industry, IT firms, janitorial service, suppliers of products, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it's a procurement contract, and if anybody wants to get in touch with me that's out there, give me a call at the Hill Neighborhood Association, and I'll be glad to steer them the right way, okay? Because it's, it's quite a, a way to increase your business. Okay, uh, thank you on that. Uh, the, I, I went to a public hearing on Tuesday at the University of Scranton for the Clark Summit State Hospital. 
They are, the uh, Department of Public Welfare is implementing uh, what they call the CHIPS program, uh, community home project programs, okay? What they're going to do, mental hospitals throughout the state, is take patients and put them in community settings. Now, it was packed. I say packed over 100 some people, all right? Some of them were workers. Some of them were just interested people like I was. Some of them uh, had, pay, had their, uh, their siblings who were patients up there. And 26 of the 27 people that spoke were against the closing. And as the county commissioner was there, O'Malley, and Representative Flynn uh, representative was there. And the thing was that everybody's fearful that they're going to close that building and they're going to lose a lot of jobs, 400 and some jobs. And I asked the, uh, the council tonight to try to look into that matter. Will you please? A lot of those people that work at Clark Summit State Hospital are Scranton residents. And it'll be very difficult, uh, you know. Uh, a lot of people, that wasn't the only reason for jobs. Another, the main reason was they don't feel that the community would be able to handle this type of integration, okay? History will repeat, repeat itself. In 1963, it happened. And what happened was that they just didn't go for their meds. And pretty soon, uh, we had a lot of uh, urban renewal. And as a result, a lot of homelessness. Last, I want to say, okay, please, if I may, on the amnesty program that I mentioned before, we had a hearing, they had the judicial sale on Monday, 43 poppers in the city of Scranton. The repository for the county, which is their bank, which is whole city, city delinquent property tax properties, is probably over, is over 200 properties right now. Now, do we make money? I don't think so. Not when we didn't collect from those people that went into the bag, the repository. And next September, they'll have another sale, and that will be new people. So we got to look at a, some type of an amnesty program. It worries me, and it worries a lot of people. Uh, and the fact is that, you know, uh, we just got to do something about the fact that, you know, his families, we know 43 homes were bought to anybody anybody at all in government go and ask those families what they're going to do. We have it in fire. We have it in other evictions where we help these people, these families. I don't know of anybody that ever helped that one contact with these families. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Quinn. Ron Elman. <coughs> Uh, Mr. Weschler, did I say it right? Like an X. I, I certainly have no argument with you about how, how long and hard council works. Uh, I've often thought that that should be a full-time position, my, you know, but it never yeah, will be. It is. It is a full-time position. Yeah, that way. <laughs> but uh, I, I, meant, I meant like the mayor's position and his secretaries and so on. I don't know if that was a good example to use. <laughs> but in the long run, it, it's the results that count in this city. Nothing else, it's the results. That's how you're going to be remembered. Year after year, and council after council, they've hadn't had any results, you know. The, the taxes keep going up and we keep losing property. Nothing seems to change except for the worse for the, the taxable, the people here. A couple weeks ago, I mentioned a bunch of different things. It, it, nobody commented on them the next week. You know, 60% 60, 60 increase in foreclosures and no comment, and no comment about the 57% tax increase. People, the, the people are talking about all this. They're worried. Just people are going to lose their houses. Not just the tax increase, it's everything else. You know, 
people in government seem to think the only expenditures we have is taxes. You know, I saw today where they said food went up 19% since last year. Of course, so many people here get food stamps. I don't get food stamps, but I wish I, I, wish I could. You know, every week, right here, standing before you, there's many intelligent speakers, and, and they make some extraordinary good suggestions and comments. Nobody ever seems interested in them. They just seem to fall on deaf ears. Even our Times reporter never reports what people say in here. And once in a while, somebody asks me that doesn't see it on television or something, you know, about a, a matter that went on. Always seem to be doing it, just throwing good money after bad in this city. Hiring and inventing positions, and, and it just doesn't ever stop, you know? Last week I mentioned that the two houses next to me are, are up for sale last week. <clears throat> and I know what to expect. I won't get the caliber of people in there in the future that are living there right now. My neighborhood has declined something terrible with a bunch of undesirables, renting or, or buying houses. They just don't care. Uh, some of the houses have just gone downhill in the, since I've moved in 20 years ago. And I, I, it's, it's, I, I got a neighborhood full of, of just problems. Uh, there's been houses broken into all around North Scranton that, that nobody seems to talk about. It's not listed. Uh, I don't know. You know, our tax dollars are, are, are so tight, and half of it goes to the school board, I know, and that's just a waste. It, they, they are just infested with waste over there. Two schools closed because of poor maintenance. You know what the result was? They hired 11 more custodians. Does that make any sense to anybody? You know, instead of firing some people responsible for the closure of two schools, they hire. Well, my friends, I don't know. I don't expect this council to be any different from the past ones. They're just, your hands are tied on so many, so, so many problems. The worst problem in the world is, is the nonprofits. Nobody seems to be able to, to counteract that in any way whatsoever. I, I, I hope, I hope you, you know, you guys aren't like, the council before and the council before that and the council before that. I, I hope you can can help the people of this city and, and turn things around. And real quick, I'd like to thank Mary Ann for sending me a get well card. It was very kind of her. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Elman. Bill Jackwitz. <coughs> Good evening, Scranton City Council, Kathy, Lori, Amo, and I can never remember your name. I'm sorry. I apologize. But anyway, uh, I'm going to kind of piggyback off, uh, off of Ronnie and a couple other people. Uh, I, I guess I think I look at things differently than most people do, and. Uh, what I view the problems we have in the city of Scranton and the fact that we've been distressed for 22 plus years, over 8,000 days, is the citizens were not, and the taxpayers were not responsible for that. Okay, we, the citizens and taxpayers have to bear the blunt of it because we're the ones whose taxes continue to go up, whose fees continue to go up, and you guys are taxpayers too, I understand that. But uh, 
Speaker after speaker, year after year, came to this city council, to this chamber, and spoke to city council, made recommendations, came up with solutions, came up with ideas. But you know, the citizens were ignored, and I'm hoping, we have a new council now, we have a new mayor, I'm hoping that that doesn't happen again. Because the citizens are not responsible for this city being distressed. The mayor is, and past city councils are, and past appointed officials to the city of Scranton. And that's a fact, Jack. That's just the way it is. They are the ones who made the votes. All, every city council, every mayor has a record. All you have to do is go back and look at the record and look at the votes that they made. Okay, look at what they voted for, look at what they voted against. We went through a four year period of time, I'll call it the three to two vote, the, the, the d dirty real people I think it was called or whatever it was, they put this city 50 years behind times. They're the ones who took us to court, put us in court, so on and so forth, and the previous con uh, the council after that, the same thing. That's the reason why the city is in the mess it's in now. It's not because of the citizens. It's not because of the residents. But the citizens and the residents are the ones whose taxes can continue to get raised, whose garbage fee continues to get raised, and so on and so forth. And again, those are the facts. And that's what needs to be stopped. We need, we need the, the, the mayor, city council, the, the city controller, and every, uh, the everybody to work together and really, seriously, work for the people. The people are at the end of the rope. They can't afford it anymore. You know, the average person in the city of Scranton gets between six and eight hundred dollars a month in Social Security. And, 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 and again, these are facts. This is the way it is, and this is what needs to be taken into consideration. Now, do I have solutions for it? No, I had solutions. 10 years ago, eight years ago, six years ago, I was ignored. The Legion of Doom had a lot of solutions. They were ignored, we were laughed at, we were called names. But you know what, everything that we said was gonna happen basically happened. But who's taking the blunt of it? The citizens, the taxpayers, the working people in this city. We're losing jobs, people are losing their houses, the roads aren't being repaired. You know, my garbage wasn't picked up for a month. I mean, it just goes on and on. Go on Prospect Avenue in South Scranton. From the 100 block of uh, uh, Prospect Avenue until about the 1000 block of Prospect Avenue, it's a total mess. You know, the, the highway to the Baghdad looked better after the bombing of the first Iraq war than what Prospect Avenue looks like. Again, who's taking the blunt of it? The people who live in the city of Scranton. That's why people are moving out. That's why people don't want to move here, okay? Jobs are leaving, businesses are closing. Parking rates are going up and going up. Why would anybody want to pay a dollar an hour to park in Scranton? Seriously, you know? Everything is going up. Who's to blame for it? Not the citizens, not the commuters, but the elected officials, the past elected officials. Now we have new elected officials, I'll call you the current elected officials. And I'm hoping that you guys really work for the people. You know, put a, put a lot of time in working for the people. We don't need any tax rate, ta any more tax increases. We don't need any more rate, uh, raising of fees. I know that that might be the only option avail available to you, but the citizens can't afford it anymore. They really can't. And hopefully we don't lose any more jobs or businesses or citizens. Thank you. Thank you. Doug Miller. Good evening, Council. Doug Miller, Scranton. Um, I'd like to go back to uh, last time I was here. I addressed an issue in regards to uh, Mr. Amoroso. And I raised some real serious and valid questions uh, in regards to uh, his track record or his alleged track record of poor management in terms of uh, his alleged mismanagement of St. Vincent's Hospital. You know, we sat here, we listened to his uh, presentation of things that, you know, as we've gone over 
numerous times. Um, we're quite well aware of just about everything he went over with us. And, uh, you know, I, before I left the podium, I had asked counsel if they had any knowledge of this alleged mismanagement. And, you know, it was really discouraging for me to get the impression that uh, it was almost as if this council wanted to do everything it could to dodge that question and not even acknowledge it. This is a serious matter. And I do believe this council has an obligation to look into it, whether you believe it or not, you do. I think the mayor has an obligation to look into it, most of all, because this was his, his hand-picked individual. And that question still remains uh, out there, is who determined that Mr. Amoroso was, in fact, the best candidate to come in and so-called advise us, since we are so incapable of putting two and two together ourselves that we need Mr. Amoroso to begin with. And we're still waiting for that question to be answered, and perhaps uh, we, can, we can get the mayor to uh, answer that question. You know, perhaps hopefully in between rides we can, uh, you know, he could take a few seconds and maybe answer that question for us. But this is a serious issue. I've already been in contact with the attorneys that represented doctors and lawyers, or, or excuse me, doctors and nurses that did work for St. Vincent's. And uh, tomorrow morning I will be speaking with one of the other ones who uh, is also quite baffled that uh, the city of Scranton and the Scranton Chamber of Commerce would even consider entertaining uh, any sort of business with this individual considering the alleged track record he has. You know, we were, I was told, uh, you know, to read his resume that, you know, people come here and there's a tradition of uh, denigrating people. This has nothing to do with denigrating people. I think the problem is, is that we oftentimes, our elected leaders, live in a delusional world and have a difficult time grasping the concept of reality. This is a serious issue. And rather than turning a blind eye to it, which is the tradition of this chamber by our council officials, turning a blind eye to important issues, perhaps maybe you should take the time to review the, the resume like I did, and you'll find things like this. We could talk about that he represented the Vatican and he had all these acclimates. That's, fan that's beautiful. But we're talking about the present day. We're talking about the business he's conducting in the city and the recommendations that he's giving us and the track record he has and that you have an obligation to look into it. And I'm not going to put this to bed because I know that's what we want to have happen, but I'm going to continue to pursue it and the, the appropriate people will be held accountable because the games in this city have to end. In regards to the uh, DCD grant, uh, this takes us back to the end of last year before the uh, 2014 operating budget was passed. And as we could recall, uh, this administration, this current administration, failed to take part in any of the budget process. Rather, they're objective was to use a few members of that are currently on this council to rubber stamp uh, this grant through in last year's budget to avoid having to come in and roll their sleeves up and do some hard work and thanks you know to our former council president mrs evans and our former finance chair mr joyce uh they put a uh, pretty staunch end to that at the time but unfortunately now with the transition and everything else uh you know unfortunately the grant was applied for and received, I believe $290,000 roughly. I don't have the exact figure, but that's irrelevant. The bottom line is real simple. There was no, no necessity to apply for this grant. Um, I think that the taxpayers need to be made well aware that, um, you know, we could talk about the, you know, the, the use of a grant. In other words, that's still your tax dollars. And the truth of the matter is that in the second year of this grant, um, you're paying one-third of that and the following year two-thirds of that and then moving forward you're paying all of it the grant eventually expires that's what happens with grant money but we're a city who consistently relies on grant money and I think it was Mrs. Schumacher who made a very valid argument at the public hearing on March 17th I believe it was in the newspaper she was quoted as saying here we are again holding out our little tin can begging for more money like little beggars on the street corner and I just have to ask this council tonight when are we going to finally face the fact that we cannot continue to function and run our city on grant money? When are we going to finally turn our brains on, use some creativity, and, and generate revenue consistently, a steady stream of revenue that we developed ourselves? Mr. Jackowitz talked about uh, tonight coming here for so many years, bringing up solutions and suggestions that we all turn a blind eye. I brought up ideas on impact fees, the 1% tuition tax on the university, he'd bring in between six and eight million dollars easily. But it fell on deaf ears, as a lot of other things do. So my question tonight is, are we ever gonna see leadership? And if so, when? We need to solve our own problems, and we need to do it now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lee Morgan.
Good evening, Council. Good evening. Um, I brought a book with me today. Not This isn't a shot at you, Mr. Rogan, but just in general, I don't know if anybody at Council want to look at this or not. It, it kind of explains what a carpet bagger is and the whole terminology behind it. <laughs> um, and really, I, I think it's really important to realize what's happening in this city. Um, because Scranton is like this, the South. It's just being overrun by people that are just picking the last little bit of what's left of our city. Um, I really think this council needs to work together, the five members, to file a petition for bankruptcy. I really think that's really the only way to go. I had a great opportunity this week to be at the single tax office paying my property taxes. The people there were standing in a long line absolutely beside themselves because they can't pay it. They're wondering what this council and what this mayor's thinking. There's people out there saying, I voted for this guy. Where's his plan? This is taking place at the mall. People are asking this question. They have no more money left. I really think that when you have a credit card bill and you can't pay your bill, you hire an attorney and you file a bankruptcy. We're trying to find new revenue streams for money. We've already heard a discussion tonight of what most retirees retire on Social Security with. My question is, in 20 years from now, when people in my generation, the baby boomers, are dead, who's going who's to live in this city? Who's going to live in this city when the, when the older people pass away that are in their 70s and 80s now? Nobody. We're going to keep tearing houses down? Is that the solution to our problem? Detroit did that to a large section of their city. It really hasn't done very much for them. And you know, Mr. Jackowitz, I appreciate the things he said here tonight, but you know, I think he's wrong about some of the things he said because the voters most certainly are responsible for everything that's happened here because they voted every single individual into the mayor's office and into council for the history of this city. And we wonder, if we wonder what happened to the Scranton School District, the same thing happened. This city is stuck in a situation where it has a total lack of ability to pick a leadership team. Leaders don't take a city into bankruptcy, or at least where we are financially. And you know, you don't close schools down and sell them off the way it's happened in this city. We have students without books in this city. How is it possible? Is that, does that show any leadership at all anywhere? I don't think it does. It's just very critical for the people in this city to know one thing. They have a right to vote. They can vote for whoever they care to vote for. But when situations like this arrives, they have to look at themselves. I mean, at the single tax office, I was laughing. I was having the greatest time of all there because I know I've come to these council meetings for over 20 years, and I know exactly what's taking place here. Most of them didn't even understand what's going on. They thought Mr. Courtright was going to get elected, just walk in and cut all their taxes. That's what these people were saying to me. They can't pay anymore. They have no money. They're talking about sale of property. Can we sell everybody's property in this city? And then we talk about grant money. Look, at this city survived on one grant after another, after another, after another. And the fact of the matter is, you know, when we ask how Mr. Amoroso came here, it's very simple. This is a very, very desperate city that has no more straws left to grasp at because it had an inability to pick elected leaders that had the ability to lead. And you know, to be real honest with you, the most important person at this point in this city, at this time, is not the mayor. It's Mr. McGough because he controls the stuff that comes through this council. He either introduces it or he doesn't. And that's so, what's so good because, no disrespect to you, Mr. McGough, but you know what? You're an older man. You've got nothing to prove to anybody. Okay? You're not trying to move up the ladder or down the ladder. And you're an intelligent man. And you know what? You're a person who's sitting in a seat who has the ability to make great changes to this city. And that's what I believe. And I think you're intelligent enough to do it even though some people may disagree because they seem to think of the history of some of the people that run this council. But you know something? Sometimes there's leaders around. You just have to look for them. Thank you.
Nick Dobson. Good evening, Council. Dave Dobson, President. Um, something just popped into my mind listening to the other speakers on these grants. Uh, seeing as the state constitution has saddled us with 33% tax exempt, and the federal government for the last 33 years has seen fit to dry up the revenue sharing. Maybe we should get a couple of bigger grants for a change. Uh, it's all on how they're spent after that. But uh, basically, uh, they stick us with the situation and tell us what rotten people we are for not wanting to pay a bigger bill year in and year out. And it's starting to really hit home. I agree with the uh, other side of the equation that people are having a hard time paying their bills. Um, last week I mentioned utilities and Prospect Avenue came up. There is a massive water project on that and I do not feel that it is Scranton's responsibility to fix that street. I feel that it's time now that the spring is coming. Let's not forget who did the repairs on their water lines, and I think they should pave our streets, the streets that they had work on. Uh, there's a lot of work on Willow Street, there's a lot of work on Hickory Street, Prospect Avenue, and probably many other areas of town that I haven't traveled through recently, and it's time that they kick in and uh, use some of the money that they charge us every month for these utilities to uh, repair the streets. It's not right for them to come in. And uh, a city inspection before and after might be warranted. Uh, they can take an average street that isn't too bad and turn it into a real washboard. Um, on the chamber last week, I mentioned that nobody was fighting for Scranton. Well, certainly you people are from Scranton, and I'm entirely convinced that we have mutual interests and you're fighting for Scranton, but it seems like uh, a lot of people have a business model that entails uh, a few years of tax-free and then move on to the next tax-free. And that's uh, one book I've read in the past was Free Lunch by David K. Johnston, and that's what it's all about. Uh, the uh, New York Yankees got $650 million worth of New York prime real estate parks and so forth handed to them. And that's just an example now. We can see that also locally here. Uh, they come into town, they have a business model, and we're hopefully after the, uh, the tax exemption is uh, up, they're going to stay and we're going to have a few tax dollars coming in and it doesn't work out that way they move on to another tax-exempt uh, property and, and stay there for how many years that it's tax-exempt. And uh, back during the election, uh, it came to light that a lot of people aren't paying trash fees and they're doing it with impunity. And I would like to see a collection and liens against property at the very least that would mitigate if they are unable to pay. If it's some poor old lady with $800 a month coming in, she could just leave the liens pile up against her house. But when a house gets sold, in the end, uh, we could also have uh, our money through attorneys and so forth and closing costs. Um, it, Ten years were owed in one case, and that's too much. And uh, I'm not convinced that that incident uh, and people didn't have the money to pay. It might have been more like uh, motorboat gas for Lake Wampy Poo Poo or something, <laughs> but it certainly wasn't that they didn't have, uh, they were living on $800 a month. And uh, I'd like to mention once again, please consider Steamtown 
It was put here in 1992, I think it was conceived, and uh, it was cut 10% in 2011, 10% in 2012. It was supposed to be a gem of the city. They no longer, uh, they're trying to get another steam engine running. They don't even have a steam engine running, and their visitor ship has been atrocious. I gave you the figures last week, so please consider a letter to uh, congressmen so we could get some money in there. And, and uh, it, once again, it's a tax-exempt organization, and uh, uh, it's supposed to be the gem of the town, and uh, there's a lot of money being lost because people aren't, aren't coming in. One final thing, again, trade packs. We have the Trans-Pacific Trade Pack. We have uh, the uh, Keystone Pipeline. The pipes are coming from India. Where are the jobs? There, there are the jobs. And it, it's just a shame because uh, the working man has gone to, to half of what they used to earn. And please Thank contact you, your Dobbs. congressman in the office of the president and tell him no more trade packs. Forget about it. We need jobs. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Anyone else care to address council? Mr. Spiraglia? Andy Spiraglia, Citizens Grant and fellow Scrantonians. Good evening. I'm going to say a little tale of two foreclosures, one at the mall and one at the parking authority. Both of them have cost the city many millions of dollars. And there you should be screaming, but I didn't hear a word out of you. Mr. Boscoff, as a partner as in the Mall Associates, Mr. De uh, Boscoff's and the Mall Partners are two different entities. It's the Mall Partners who caused the foreclosure. But being Mr. Boscoff serves on both places, he sort of comes in as a central figure. Now, apparently, he had to make a big bond payment and decided not to. Whether we think the mall isn't worth the cost of the bond payment or not, I know not. But I do know he's hoping to buy the mall back at considerable less than the bond payment. And who is hurt in this? The people of Scranton. He come, if he pulls it off, he comes out smelling like a rose. Why, we smell like stinkweeds. But this is the way it goes in this city. Now let's take the other thing, the Scranton Parking Authority. That went into foreclosure too. But you notice there was nobody pushing for a sale at a parking authority from the people who foreclosed. Why? It's obvious why. They'll make more money off the citizens of Scranton by keeping us paying to the nose than they would by trying to sell off the properties. And this is what we're looking at. Where we are now happened many, many years ago with things going on. Nobody paid attention to how many people were coming and using these parking garages. Mr. Boscoff, as you know, was called in at the very beginning as a cornerstone of the mall project. I think the mall was something like a hundred and some million was poured into that. It's just the same that somebody would say now, it isn't worth the price of that huge bond payment. But where are we going with the loss? We could have bought a whole fleet of police vehicles. Maybe half the fire department could have got new vehicles with the money we lost to these two foreclosures. I know you're hoping that uh, you said that uh, the TAN might be paid off in April. Is that true? We're in line to pay off the TAN in April, and I assume that's the reason why we're holding off on the money for the police and firemen. So we get a better price. We're saying that we don't have the TAN to pay as well as this other bond issue we're going to have to pay. When you've got millions of dollars in, in debt, if you clear off some of them, sometimes you can get a little better deal. If we pay off the TAN, I assume we're going to get a little better deal on the 22 million or 30 million we've got to borrow for the police and fire. Or I hope the courts don't step in. The, you know, they did appeal to the court. 
to make us pay a dedicated amount like we did for the 22 million. Another 22 million maybe, I mean 22%. That could be two. We borrowed, we didn't pay off our debt. We had something like 20 million or 21 million. So they went to the courts and they got a special deal and they borrowed the money at 9% for this deal. And this is what was done to new people. I guess you must have known because it was in the papers. If you read the papers, they said all these things were printed. And the facts was. Now why we were, did, were 22 million in debt that time, I have no way of knowing. But anyway, the bills weren't paid. And now they said, what, it was five or six million bills ain't paid now. Something like that was in the paper again. And you have to look at the situation. We cannot take another 22% tax hike. And that's probably what you're gonna to have to do, maybe even 30%. And you're gonna be responsible for it. Whether you wanna do it or not, you're gonna, the responsibility is in your hands when that tax hike comes up. And you know it's coming. All you have to do is, well, you know, it has to be, because you gotta pay off this 22 million and seven million they said that were, the budget was under, under, and the amount of unpaid bills. So what we got, 30 million or 30 million more that has to be paid? Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Council. Marie Schumacher. Good evening. Uh, start off tonight with A under uh, third order. Is somebody going to uh, share that? Are, are we on track to get the audit in the time that it's contractually specified to be provided? Uh, we received from Rossi and Rossi the list of things that are needed um, at this point in time it's it's basically everything um, okay. and, and that's all that we have I, I don't know if that's on track or I know that they are working on you know the audit but toward toward a a delivery on time this year okay Okay, and then also, will, will we be getting, um, uh, Frank Joyce always provided uh, comparables on a monthly basis of the collections at the single tax office. Uh, will council still continue to do that? We have not received anything from the single tax office. Has it been requested? To that effect, um, but it probably would be a good idea if it were requested and that we would have it. I think that would be helpful and provide it to, uh, to us. And then um, I noticed in the paper this past week that uh, South Abington Township is, uh, has gotten a new fire rating for their insurance and their insurance rates of residents are s scheduled to go down by hundreds of dollars. Um, and I'm wondering what is our, the uh, rating for the city of Scranton? We're class we four also. That, and that's what uh, South Abington just went to, uh, class four from six. Okay. And our insurance, I know there's issues down in the, the uh, treasurer's office. Uh, is that $25,000 deductible uh, per year or is that per incident? I know that was discussed at council a number of years ago. <coughs> I have no could idea. We, okay, could we find that out? Because if not, there, that would certainly be something I'd like to know. And then when Mr. Amoroso was here, he said he was going to provide his PowerPoint presentation to card copies to the council or maybe soft copies, I don't know, via the internet. But do you have those, the PowerPoint presentation? Yeah, I, I, I do believe could, that we have it um, on file. Could you post it on the uh, City Council's website? Um, I believe that that would be 
possible? In like real time, pretty much. <laughs> the sooner the better. Well, there, I mean, there really are, are a lot of questions. I know during the during his presentation, he talked about moving both the pension dollars and the $22 million judgment into the budget. Does that mean, and he didn't specify what he had in mind with respect to the $22 million judgment, but he did say that he wants to dedicate a portion of the uh, residential taxes, the property taxes, for the pension. Now, do we have any idea how much that would be a year? I can't, you know, on one hand, he said, you know, we have this much money coming in, and if we didn't have all this debt, everything would be uh, roses. But then, and, and then he also proceeded, is proceeding to chip away at that very same pot of money. I don't know if he even realizes that we've got two unfunded debt payments that are coming out of that each year for nine more years or eight and nine perhaps uh, and if we do that uh, what are we going to have left to run the city and will they be will they be formal pension uh, uh, revenue bonds if if he continues with that and it comes to you would you approve revenue bonds for those two items I, I can't speculate on what mr. Amoroso would you intended and I can't speculate on what we would do as a council or what the administration would do with the recommendations uh, we have to wait and until it actually happens and when do you expect that would be I again I don't know I mean you know again he said um, if I just finish with this one Please. thought uh, he also said that you know, really the budget, this year's budget was, you know, off by a little bit. Now, remembering that last December the mayor said it was seven and a half million dollars, I don't consider that a little bit. But he also said that was being taken care of, I think the quote was by Dave, by, uh, with expenses. What expenses has Mr. Bolzoni cut to make those adjustments in the, in, to match the revenues? Again, I, I do not know. Could we find Those out? Those would be things that you would have right ask to ask Mr. Bolzoni. <clears throat> okay, another right to know. If it rains on Saturday, I'll have extra time. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Joan Hodewan, it's city resident. Uh, with Good regard evening. to Mr. Amoroso, um, he billed his original presentation as a preliminary report just to give us a status of where he was. Is he planning a second appearance of, in front of council? Th there is nothing planned. Um, we asked that when there was a, a final or even a, an update, if they would, you know, come yeah, before I, I council be and um, they accepted they said that they would do that. Yes, I, I, and I believe a lot of people will be very interesting into saying, you know, what, what he will say next. And I agree with uh, Marie, we really need to have his PowerPoint slides posted to the city's website so that we can look at that information in detail. You can't just pull up the ECTV program and be able to read the slides. You, we really need that uh, provider. If not that, then make hard copies available. Uh, and my second item is um, potholes. Uh, you may recall uh, several weeks ago that the Colts bus system had to reroute two buses because the routes were so bad with potholes and the buses simply could not make it through. Is there any possibility that the city could give priority to those stretches of road so that the Colts bus could get back to its original route? Because that may have affected a lot of its uh, citizens who depend on the, uh, that service. And uh, also maybe the city should take a look at uh, routes uh, that uh, emergency vehicles have to traverse to make sure that they can reach the citizens and they can get to uh, the three local hospitals. Uh, I know money's tight, but perhaps we can maybe prioritize uh, the work as the spring, you know, 
God willing, there will be a spring. Uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, You're optimistic. I don't know. Hopefully, there'll be a spring and not just you know now and then the fall. But I think that would be good for the citizens. And you know, and we may have only a few dollars, but uh, when you have to reroute buses, it says something about the condition of the roads. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else who cares to address council? Mrs. Reed. Fifth order, 5A motions. <clears throat> Mr. Wexler. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Last week I attended a meeting of the South Scranton Crime Watch. Um, earlier in the month they had did a, a walk through South Scranton, uh, identifying many different issues with blight in the lower South Side uh, neighborhood. Um, also at the meeting was uh, City Inspector uh, Patty Fowler was there. and. Uh, she took the list, the list that the uh, citizens had compiled and took it back to the city. Um, she, she is a very capable person and uh, gave a good report to the group as to which problems could be um, worked on and which problems can't. And like I said, that list has been taken to uh, Pat Hinton for um, action. Um, this week, uh, Councilman uh, Bill Gahan and I, we took a tour of uh, my neighborhood up in East Mountain. Um, just to take a look at some of the problems that have happened uh, up in my neighborhood. Uh, the winter, like everywhere else, has been very uh, tough on, on that area. A lot of the problems, like everywhere else, are potholes. Um, we had a major reconstruction project on East Mountain Road in 2005, and right now this uh, winter has caused that to be uh, serious damage to that project that we did. Um, we took a look at a couple other different things, and, and Bill have a list of what we saw to give to DP Director um, Gallagher. Um, the thing that we found most disturbing, we stopped at Engine 10, uh, which is a very important and required fire station for our neighborhood and, f and for Southside. Uh, that station, um, I think, is going to celebrate its 50th anniversary this year. Uh, and if you go in there, it'll be like a little trip in the time machine. Um, a lot of the equipment in there, the furnace and things like that, are, are from the original construction. Uh, if the, the roof currently is, is full of holes, um, in the summertime there's trees growing out of the, out of the roof. Um, and I have, I've spoken to Mayor Courtright, and they, he is aware, and Chief DeSarno is aware, um, and we really do have to find a way to make some improvements at that fire station. Uh, and closure is, is not an option. That firehouse has to stay open. Um, so we are going to have to make an investment in, in repairing it, uh, including repairs uh, to the uh, engine that's there. Um, that's it, Mr. McGough. Thank you. Mr. Romy? Thank you. Um, just two items. I just wanted to talk about item 5B um, and, and one other item. Um, about a month or so ago, uh, a detective from the Scranton Police Department contacted me following conducting a raid on local um, secondhand stores. Um, many of them we see, we see the We Buy Gold signs where um, you could sell scrap gold, jewelry, coins, things of that nature. And there, are, there was a city ordinance on the books and also state ordinances requiring that those, um, those companies show I, have ID present from the person selling them the item to make sure it's not stolen um, or if it is stolen so they can be tracked. Unfortunately, there was a loophole in the city ordinance that didn't require um, identification. So when, when this was brought to my attention, I contacted Councilman Loscom um, and uh, our solicitor, Mr. Menorah, um, Attorney Menorah, and this was what, was, uh, what we came up with. Um, between council, the administration, between the mayor and uh, the city solicitor, Jason Shrive, um, what the ordinance does, it, it now requires um, a better, better identity to be shown. If the person doesn't have identification with them, a picture has to be taken. Um, and this hopefully will crack down on the selling of stolen goods in the city of Scranton. It's, it's bad enough when, if your home gets broken into, but it, it's even worse when our, our police see that it was sold, your goods were sold to a shop in the city and then they can't be tracked. So hopefully this ordinance will crack down on the sale of any stolen, um, stolen goods to these secondhand stores within the city. And um, you know something that, that solves a very, very widespread problem. Now that we see these We Buy Gold stores going up everywhere, just five or six years ago, 
Um, there were only a couple places where you could sell these type of items. Now, you drive down almost any major street in the area and, and you see these type of stores. So this is something um, that, that will work to correct that problem. So we're looking forward to, to passing that. And just an update. On, I, last week I spoke about the condition on Main Avenue and uh, I, I'm sure all of us on council continue to get calls and uh, emails about it. I, I'd just like to reiterate that Main Avenue is a state road. It is not um, maintained by the city. Um, but our office did send a letter to PennDOT requesting that this road is milled and paved. Um, and I will follow up with PennDOT, uh, if not tomorrow, the beginning of next week to see, um, to see where that request stands. And that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Mr. Alaska? Yes, thank you. Uh, first, I too would like to uh, wish Helen Kravitz a very happy birthday. Uh, she's very energetic. It's hard to believe that uh, that's her age. <laughs> she's got more ambition than I do. But uh, God bless you, Helen, and, and uh, many more. Um, next, I'll, I'll address 5B. Mr. Rogan, I commend you for really pursuing that once you got the information. And, uh, and uh, our solicitor followed up on it with some changes to the legislation. Um, this is something I think will benefit everybody. And, and again, as Mr. Rogan said, tighten the loophole on uh, people getting away with uh, selling stolen items. They'll have to try and go out of the area and hopefully they'll pick up on our ordinance too. <laughs> um, and Mr. Wexler and Mr. Gahan, um, as, as we, he discussed Engine 10 up there, that is a vital company for our city. Um, I remember there was a closure several years ago and fortunately the East Mountain Neighborhood Association got together and fought to keep that open. I know the mayor is aware of the problems there and, and he discussed it with me on several occasions that uh, he does want to get that, you know, spruced up and, and get the repairs done. Uh, again, it's just, you know, he's new into the office. We, he hasn't even had 90 days yet, so he is definitely aware of that. He's, he's again, expressed his concern to me that that is a priority uh, because the more the building deteriorates the more costly it would be to repair down the road so I do commend you guys for getting involved in that also uh, this past Monday we had a meeting here uh, with a representative from fiber which was formerly street smart and it was more of an informative meeting with our business administrator uh, Mr. McGough was there, our city clerk was there. Uh, just an update on the parking situation in Scranton, uh, an update on the technology for the meter systems, and a business administrator at the current time, rightfully so, is concerned about the, the Pango agreement uh, for credit card payments and the cost at this time to the city and the consumers on, on that program. And we we're made aware of other companies that do offer the same program. So from what I understand, it may be put out to bid uh, in the very near future because I believe this contract runs out the end of April, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, it will provide, hopefully through the uh, bidding process, the RFP, it will provide you know, better options for, for the parkers in the downtown. But I do have to say, and, and I'm sure my my colleagues on, on this board. I think all of us are, are, are in meetings just about every day with different members of the administration. I, I think that's, you know, a breath of fresh air. We make a phone call, they make their, themselves available to us, and, and I, I think just in the last month I've been to more meetings with administrative personnel than I have in the last, well, in my time on here, four years. And and it isn't just a meeting, they do express an interest in what we have to say and, and it's a good educational process for all of us. I was at another meeting Tuesday regarding our, our um, alarm ordinances for burglar and fire alarm and uh, you know there was a lot of discussion on that. We had met in the solicitor's office with the police chief, fire chief and such. So there's a lot going on behind the scenes. Everything can't be done overnight. I know there's a lot of frustration. <laughs> Believe me, I get frustrated myself very easy. And, and if something comes up that I'm going to get frustrated about, I'm going to say it. I'm going to yell about it. So far, 
you know, I'm giving the benefit of the doubt. It, it, it looks like everybody in the administration is, is trying to do their best to do what they can for the people in this city. Uh, again, it's very early in the administration, but I, I see a lot of positive. And, 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 you know, I think I am more hopeful than I've ever been that, that uh, we're on the, the road to, uh, you know, getting this city back, back to the people, back to where it belongs, back to openness. <coughs> like I said, uh, we have, I don't think any one of us has ever been rebuffed from, from contacting one of the administrative personnel or, or even they go out of their way to find time to meet us. And, and, you know, I find that refreshing. And I hope that continues. And, and as, it, as it goes now, it's, it's very good for all of us. They hear from our side. And, and again, that, the meeting the other day, uh, our business administrator sat here for two hours. It, it, when I originally told him it might be a half hour meeting, he sat here for two hours, was very interested, took a lot of notes and a lot of information. In fact, it's, it appears every one of our meetings, when we're in caucus, before we come out here, our business administrator is still in his office. He comes down and checks with us in, in our council office to see if we have any questions or concerns or anything that, that he needs discussed with before he goes home. So, you know, I'm hopeful. I think we're all hopeful. I think uh, it's a breath of fresh air. Hopefully it'll continue this way. And uh, please, you know, be patient. I know we've been patient for many years, but in my heart, I, I feel confident that, that things are on the right path. You know, we have to give things a chance. And I'm happy to be here and, and to be part of it. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Mr. Gaunt? Yes, thank, thank you. you. Mr. Uh, just a few things. Um, as Mr. Wexler men mentioned, uh, we both were at the East Mountain neighborhood meeting this week. It was very good to go around East Mountain and see some of the problems that are going on up there, some of the concerns that those residents have. And I will be forwarding all of those concerns to our DPW director, uh, Dennis Gallagher. Um, we did receive, council received correspondence this week from John Hazuri, the pave cut inspector. Uh, utility companies are, are going to be working in Southside, uh, North Scranton, and Westside, um, and they will be paving uh, towards the end of April in those areas, just to update everybody on that. Um, just a concern that I had, this, uh, this week, um, Mayor Courtright was involved in a uh, incident up in the Hill section um, on parade day. Um, my concern about the ride-along issue uh, is based on questions regarding the city's legal exposure and, and liability in an incident like that. Um, I did contact Attorney Shrive, our city solicitor, this morning. I talked with him. He sent me some documents uh, that may be helpful with some of the questions that I had about the city's legal exposure, our insurance policy, uh, what kind of things that covers in the event that an elected official, if it was one of us, the mayor, anybody, um, were to be involved in an incident if they were riding along in a police vehicle, a DPW truck, um, on the scene of a fire, on a fire truck, whatever it may be. Um, so I was concerned uh, about some of those issues, as I said, of legal exposure and what the liability would be. Um, so I haven't had a chance to review those documents yet as I just uh, received them today, uh, but I will be doing that. Um, and finally, a few weeks ago, um, I think three weeks ago, actually March 13th, I had sent a letter um, to, the, to the mayor um, concerning questions I had about business retention after we heard the news that uh, two businesses would leave the city. Um, and I just wanted to inform everyone that I did receive correspondence from the mayor's office. I um, mean, I'd like to read that now. Um, I, we received this March 21st. Um, and it said, Dear Mrs. Reed, I am in receipt of your letter of March 13, 2014, wherein your, you forwarded questions from Councilman Bill Gawhan regarding business retention efforts. Since that time, City Solicitor Jason A. Shrive, Esquire, Business Administrator David A. Bolzoni, and myself have discussed the issues raised by Councilman Gawhan with him to the satisfaction of all parties. 
Should Councilman Gahan or any other member of City Council request any further information on this issue or any other issue, I will be happy to meet with them to discuss the same sincerely, uh, William L. Courtright, Mayor. Um, I did have a back and forth through email correspondence with our business administrator, Dave Bolzoni. Um, and I do appreciate the response from the mayor's office. However, my intent here, to, when I asked those questions on March 13th, it wasn't just out of my own curiosity. I asked those questions and hoped that I would get a response that I could share with the public on what, um, some, what the plan was I, um, and, and what, the, what the city was doing. As I said, I, I have talked to Dave Bolzoni, but it's not just out of my own curiosity and it's not just about me. Those were answers that I would hope I could share with the public. Um, and that is all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Um, very briefly, um, as far as the, uh, the mayor's involvement in an incident, uh, I, I don't know what the legal or the uh, liability issues are, but I know it has been a past practice of m many administrations of riding along in service vehicles, uh, be they police cars or I know it's been a practice with many mayors of during snowstorms of going out with uh, DPW and um, you know being involved in, in those operations. So um, I, I actually uh, you know, applaud you know anyone uh, in the administration who would you know take the time to go out and see what it is, see what it's like to to do those jobs and, and the difficulty that's involved in, you know, fighting fires or, you know, being a police officer, being a member of DPW. And um, I, I'm sure that uh, everything that was done was uh, within the, the bounds of, you know, the legality and liability uh, that we have. Um, Many of the issues that are being brought up uh, are, are legitimate issues, um, be it street paving, uh, you know, capital improvements to a, a firehouse, uh, whatever. Realize that all of these are things that are that are dependent upon time and money, and I keep reiterating that that in the situation that we are in in the city. And with the budget that we have, things need to be prioritized. And the administration and council is well aware of the problems that exist and are trying to address the problems that are of primary importance, be it paving certain streets or dealing with certain um, you know, buildings and all. Believe me, we, we all share in the concerns that people have. What we have to do is, as others have said, be a little bit patient and hopefully we resolve these problems as we go along and as they appear. Um, but it is, as we look into some of these problems, in some of these situations, we talked about, um, you know, paving of streets. It, it, an estimate that it costs to mill and pave one block is somewhere around twenty thousand dollars. And if it requires things like curb cuts and drainage and all, that price goes dramatically up. And so it, it becomes a a difficult proposition determining what we can do and where we can do these things and when we can do them. Um, hopefully we get to resolve many of the problems that people have, but again, some patience. And um, I, did you mention the street cleaning um, list? No, I didn't. There, we did receive a, a list for street cleaning from um, DPW from Mr. Uh, Gallagher and we are going to request that those 
that that list be placed on the DPW, on the city website, in the DPW site, so the people are aware of when the street cleanings will take place. They begin in April, and there's a schedule all the way through August. So it is pretty extensive, and it looks as though it covers most of the city, if not all of the city. So um, if people are concerned, and we will keep you aware of the, the areas as they become um, pertinent, uh, th those areas that will be um, covered through the street cleaning. And that is all. Thank you. Could I just, I yes, please, Mr. Gordon. Just, just to be clear, just to respond to your comments, I, I too applaud anyone that goes out and is involved and sees what other city employees do. I'm not saying anything against um, any elected official going out and doing that. My only concern, just to reiterate what I said earlier, is the um, legal liability that it may cause. And that's, that's the whole concern I had, and that's why I made a comment on that. Thank you. The, the mayor is a full-time employee of the city. I don't see how there could be any legal ramification of it. If it was a member of council, there may be other issues because we're part-time employees, but he's a full-time employee of the city. Well, I, I just think we need clarification on that because I can't see how if an elected official would be involved in any way in a um, police activity, in an investigation, in a incident, um, there may be legal li liability. I don't know. That's why I'm asking. And I just think we need clarification on that. Well, because I, I wouldn't want to see the city get sued or anything like that. That's, that was my concern. That's why, that's why I brought that up. I certainly don't think that the city would be in any legal trouble from a mayor helping a police officer or if it was Joe Average on the street helping a police officer in a tough situation. Well, okay. I just Let's think it's worth getting clarification. Okay. That's the only reason I asked. Thank you. 5B, for introduction, an ordinance amending file of council number 11, 1999 as amended, entitled amending file of the council number 9, 1935 as amended, an ordinance regulating the licensing of purchasers of scrap gold, old gold, silver, jewelry, clothing and other valuable articles and providing penalties for the violation thereof by adding additional terms, increasing the licensing fee, increasing the penalties of violations thereof, providing for suspension of license, licenses and modernizing the language thereof and incorporating rules and regulations by further making amendments to increase the license fee in section two from $50 to $100 per file of council number 178 of 1992, section one, codified in chapter 340, peddling and soliciting section 340-13A, fees and amending section 4A to provide additional information to better identify the seller and the goods or article being sold in section 5A to increase the penalties for noncompliance with the provisions of this ordinance codified in the administrative code in chapter 379 secondhand goods and dealers at section 379-4A and section 379-5A and to change the department name from the Department of Community Development to the Department of Licensing Inspections and Permits throughout this ordinance. At this time I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? Yes, once again, I'd just like to thank Attorney Menorah, Attorney Shrive, and Mayor Corey for their quick action on this. Um, it, it's bad enough if anyone is, is victimized of a crime, but certainly nobody, no business in this city should be making a profit off stolen merchandise, and, and this will help stop that. Um, I would like to just add to that. Uh, a number of years ago, our house was burglarized, and the police went out to try and re and find some of the stolen materials. And what they met with was they found some of the articles at a, a store, and but yet there was no record of who had sold it to them. They had no record of it. And so it was very difficult to track down where some of the other items may be and who had actually sold them to this, this pawn shop. Um, and so that hopefully this will help save some other people that aggravation and uh, that we faced. 
All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so move. 5C for introduction of resolution accepting a contribution in the amount of $500 received by the City of Scranton from the Fraternal Order of Police, EB German Lodge No. 2, for the Public Safety Manpower Initiative. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. I would just like to thank the uh, EB German Lodge No. 2 for their donation. Yes. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so move. 5D for introduction of resolution appointment of Al Brokavich, 701 Newton Road, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, as alternate number three member of the Scranton Housing Appeals Review, Bo Review Board for a term of five years to commence on March 20, 2014. Mr. Brokavich's term will expire on November 24, 2019. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5D be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 5E for introduction to resolution appointment of Mario J. Bevilacqua, 713 Archibald Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, as a member of the Housing Appeals Review Board. Mr. Bevilacqua will be replacing Michael Trapper, whose term expired November 24, 2013. Mr. Bevilacqua will be appointed to a five-year term, which will expire on November 24, 2018. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5E be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. Sixth, or sixth orders. I'm sorry, excuse me. I would like to make a motion to table item 7E. Do we have a second? A oh, second. Um, this is the item that Mr. McGough mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, um, an appointment where the um, appointee has withdrawn their consideration. All those in favor of tabling item 7E signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. Sixth order, 6A, no business at this time. Seventh order, 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 34, 2014, appointment of Thomas C. Horlocker, 902 North Webster Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18510, as a member of the Housing Appeals Review Board. Mr. Horlocker will be replacing Richard Leonori, whose term expired November 24, 2013. Mr. Horlocker will be appointed to a five-year term, which will expire on November 24, 2018. As chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. 7B for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 35, 2014, appointment of Charles Watanis, 950 Taylor Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18510, as a member of the Housing Appeals Review Board. Mr. Watanis will be replacing Mario Savinelli, whose term expired November 24, 2013. Mr. Watonis will be appointed to a five-year term, which will expire on November 24, 2018. At this, uh, as chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7B. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7B legally and lawfully adopted. 7C for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 36, 2014, appointment of Gerald Smurl, 300 Prospect Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18505, as a member of the Housing Appeals Review Board. Mr. Smurl will be replacing Jean Tesorovich, whose term expired November 24, 2013. Mr. Smurl will be appointed to a five year term, which will expire on November 24, 2018. As chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7C. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. 
Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7C legally and lawfully adopted. 7D for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption. Resolution number 37, 2014, appointment of Michael Burke, 74 Snook Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18505, as a member of the Housing Appeals Review Board. Mr. Burke will be replacing Joseph Kays, who replaced Robert Butch Cavitz upon his re resignation as a regular member of the board, whose term expired November 24, 2013. Mr. Burke will be appointed to a five-year term, which will expire on November 24, 2018. As chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7D. Second. On the question, roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7D legally and lawfully adopted. 7E is tabled. 7F for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 39, 2014, appointment of Charles Decker, 430 Charles Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18508, as the alternate number two member of the Housing Appeals Review Board. Mr. Decker will fill the now vacant alternate number two position that was vacated by Robert Jensen, who was alternate number two but became alternate number one upon Joseph Kay's replacement of Robert Butch Cavitz upon his resignation as a regular member of the board whose term expired November 24, 2013. Mr. Decker will be appointed to a five-year term which will expire on November 24, 2018. As chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7F. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7F legally and lawfully adopted. 7G for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 40, 2014, appointment of Joseph G. Healy, 2049 Edna Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18508, as a member of the Board of the Scranton Redevelopment Authority. Mr. Healy will be replacing William Laser, whose term expires on March 19, 2014. Mr. Healy's term will expire on March 19, 2019. As chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7G. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7G legally and lawfully adopted. And I know all of council wishes all of those who were approved for their appointments this evening best of luck in their new positions. And if there's no other business, a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>